Hey guys, it's Sherry, uh, aka Recycle by Scatter, which is my business name. Um, I'm here to share with you a quick video on how I made my origami envelope uh, for the Tracy Fox Floral Envelope Challenge. Um, while I'm making the video, I thought I'd just show you the envelope that um, I made. Uh, this is the origami uh, envelope uh, style and how it looks. Uh, I like it because it gives you a lot of versatility to make um, pockets and, um, you know, added pockets or tucks or, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Um, I made mine out of um, cardstock, um, you know, uh, thicker scrapbook paper. And it, um, I kind of wished I had used the thinner scrapbook paper and because it's really hard to get your folds <laughs> correct uh, but the best I think the best thing to use if you can find a thin double-sided um, scrapbook paper it would be perfect but if you're gonna stick one of these in a journal you, you know the cardstock can get pretty thick once you start doing all the folds anyway just a quick look inside here uh, this is two different scrapbook papers um, and um, I have uh, added the little band with brads on it um, to help for the envelope uh, closure. And I also, just as a, for an added cl uh, closure to help keep it closed, I have tied a piece of needlepoint thread uh, around the flower. I just wrapped it around the flower and uh, to add just to keep it kind of help keep it closed. And on the inside, opens like this and the way the origami envelope folds you end up with little side tucks so and that's another reason for adding this band it just kind of helps you know keep things down inside these little tucks and I just kind of made a little journaling card it's just a that matches the paper it was all in the um, scrapbook uh, pad that I used paper pad that I used. Also, the way I did this uh, you and the way I glued it shut is um, it gave me another pocket on the inside. I could technically, because I used two different sheets of cardstock, I could have like four pockets. Uh, but I chose not to do that because they like I said, it gets too thick. You can only add so much to these envelopes before it gets too thick, and it's just not worthwhile to try and use in your uh, in a journal. But if you're not using it for a journal, if you're using something like this as like a gift envelope, um, you know, you can use smaller sheets of uh, scrapbook paper to make like a gift card envelope. Uh, but anyway, you know, you can add more pockets if you if you want to, but you know for journal purposes you might want to use thinner paper um, so I covered that uh, I just stenciled the inside of this and I'll go over the reason why I didn't add paper here from my cutoffs I could have but I was trying to get some of the bulkiness off of it and you'll understand what that means when I show you how you actually fold one Okay, here's the back of the envelope and it's uh, basically the same, uh, except, of course, it doesn't have the fold-over flap. Uh, and I just made a little journaling card that, that slips down in the back. And, of course, I have the little band across here to, uh, you know, help hold things in. But I, li I like the way it looks. I think it's uh, um, an added uh, embellishment that, you know, makes it, you know, decorative. Uh, but quickly, okay, I'm taking too much time here. Um just to show you how you can fold one or how you fold an origami envelope this is a 12 by 12 uh, scrapbook paper it is the thick paper but I wanted to show you what um, can be done with the double sided paper and you can see once you start to fold the thicker scrapbook paper it starts to get little cracks in it it's doesn't really matter because we ink everything anyway and we distress everything so I don't mind the cracks 
Um, so I don't mind using the thicker paper, but if, like I said, if you're going to use it in a journal, you might want to go with the thinner paper. And how you fold these, to fold the basic origami envelope, is you turn your 12 by 12 sideways. And you fold it up like this and crease it. And then you open it back up and you turn it and you fold it up like this and you crease it. Then you open it back up and you're going to take your corners and fold them to the middle. Hopefully y'all can see that. And then you just go around and you fold each, cor each of the little corners to the middle. And then once you've done that, you know, you're creasing each one, uh, you know, use your bone folder to really lay the paper down there. Um, once you do that, you can decide which side you want your paper to be. So when you fold this in the middle, you can see that your envelope forms. Well, at this point, there's so many different things that you can do. And when you're working with this, just look at how you can make the glue these together to make tucks, uh, to make the pockets. You know, do you want two closed envelopes? If you, if you do it where you can have two closed envelopes, you can sew this, of course, into the center of your signature or anywhere in your, in your journal. Um, and you'll have two envelopes you know, with the little tucks. Uh, you can do it that way. Uh, if you're gonna like sew it in the middle, you might want it to look like more like a traditional envelope. You can fold it this way and it becomes, you know, the back part, the middle part closes up, but you know, this is where the double sided comes in and uh, you get the benefit from both sides. And um, so this side becomes your envelope and the back side still has the two little um, tucks. Let me see if I got a piece of paper over here somewhere. Still becomes your, you know, your two two little tucks. Okay. Now, what I did was make cuts because I didn't want to use the. Um, I had a specific paper I wanted to use, and it was not double-sided. So I ended up using two pieces of scrapbook paper to give me um, a double-sided look, and I'll show you how I did those. But just to also um, give you an idea of all the different kind of tucks that you could have, if you do it this way, you can glue the edges here, and then this inside piece becomes a tuck here. You know, if you're just using it as an envelope and it's not actually sewn into your journal. If you did it, uh, if you used it as your signature center envelope, you could leave that open for a, a added tuck. All right, now here comes the most confusing part. <laughs> How I made mine. Okay, uh, I this is made with the thinner scrapbook paper. And... Um, I wanted to show you uh, how I cut my papers to um, uh, to do mine. Let me open this up. Alright, I folded two sheets of thin scrapbook paper just like I showed here. But I folded two of them. Alright, and then what I did these off. I decided which paper that I wanted to use as kind of like the the um, outer part of the envelope and I chose this this one to use as my outer part of the envelope you know after I've had it all folded and everything and what I did to take some of the um, added bulk off you know because this is the part that I cut off right um, I cut both of the triangle, you know, the envelope closures off to take off the bulk. And then with my other scrapbook paper, when you, when you have it, you know, I cut it, because this is the way it originally was. I cut the, you know, three corners off, because this is going to be my envelope flap. 
and then I cut it you know at that center fold and the reason why I do this is so when I go to put it inside I've numbered this so I can remember since I specialty cut it um, you need to leave a slight bit of a gap for your fold so it folds correctly and this is what happens and this is the flap side and you just kind of leave a little bit of a gap naturally I want the paper to be able to move on its own and then you close this back up fold that over and then you have your envelope make sure everything's tucked down good and this is your envelope flap now this is how I made mine as you can see let me grab it real quick and I could have when I made mine glued this piece of scrapbook paper to the top I chose not to and the reason why is I didn't want the bulk so all I did was uh, you know ink it and stencil it um, I'm okay with that you know it to me it turned out fine uh, so this is you can do the same here but if you don't like that then you can take one of your triangles and you can actually glue it to the top if you want you know if that's what you feel like you know you want it to look that way but I didn't want the added bulk alright so once you have your envelope like this and it closes there's the front and here's the back with the two tucks alright um, inside say if you glued the two sides here right you could potentially have a pocket here a pocket here pocket here and then your two front pockets and um, so like I said there's a lot of things that you could actually do but if you want to you could also you know glue these all closed right so these are all now glue closed but you don't glue the sides this inside here and leave that open if you do that then you have a full across tuck you know that you can slide things in and out of the side so that's just a quick um, I know my, my thoughts are always very disjointed so it's very hard for me to do a how do but the most important part is just knowing uh, how you fold you know once you make one the initial fold uh, you can just kind of study it a minute and you know think of all the different ways that you can use this but just quickly you know you have your piece your first fold you open it up turn it your second fold open it up and then all these corners fold to the center and you just kind of work your way around you know once you get this and then you just look at this and you decide, well, do I want my envelope to be like this? You know, to open like this? You know, you just look at your paper to see how you like best, best like the design. You know, and how you want it to contrast. And um, that's, that's really all there is to it. Anyway, hopefully I hadn't taken too long and, and y'all could uh, understand what the heck I'm talking about here. But I did want to share with how I made it. I understand that the origami envelope isn't really a new thing but it um it's new to me you know i'm new to the journal community so uh i'm still learning and uh when i came across this i just thought well you know that's really cool and um it's something that i can use to uh use in my journals also uh christmas coming up um i think i'm going to make a couple of christmas envelopes just I think they would be really cute. Uh, I really don't have any other thing, uh, journal or anything planned for, you know, a Christmas journal. So I may make a couple of um, envelopes, and if I do, I'll try to um, post a quick video showing those. Uh, but I do got, uh, I have two um, fairy journals, garden fairy journals that I'm working on right now. And uh, so hopefully I'll be able to finish those in the next couple of weeks. Um, it got really big because I have a, problem over decorating so <laughs> so I had to break my journal up into two and so I'll have a volume one and a volume two 
Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'll end up listing them on Etsy, but anyway. Um, if you're interested, subscribe, and um, so when I do post those, you'll get notification of those if you're interested in seeing them. Anyway, I've talked way too long. Thanks, guys, for um, popping in and having a look at what I, what I did, and hopefully you followed along okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.